the revelation revealed that people in the new heavens and earth, the new heavens and the new earth, would still taste death. Now, now didn't Jesus say that? <laughs> Jesus said to his disciples, look, some of you would not taste death till I come, till you see me come in my kingdom. So, after he came in his kingdom, they continued living their natural lives until they tasted death. <laughs> right? Poor, um, John saw Christ come. Right? And after he saw Christ come, he continued living his natural life until he died. He tasted death. Right? But his spirit who had been connected, had been joined to the Father in Christ so that his spirit was able to continue with God. Right? But anyway, <laughs> Revelation 21 verse um, verse 1 to 3. Revelation 21 verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 65, 17 to 20. Revelation 21, 27. And Revelation 22, 14 to 15. These are the texts that we are going to look at in this final point. Let's come to our Bible and let's get to the book of Revelation chapter 21 starting at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, that's the topic, subject of our topic. What did Jesus and his apostles really teach of the new heaven and the new earth? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So John now is, as I said, the one who lived to see it. <laughs> to see it. And Jesus did say that John would live to see it. He said to Peter, What is it to you if John remains till I come? Okay, so John did see it. <laughs> he saw the new heaven and the new earth. He saw the new covenant world being established. And I, John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Remember, this is the kingdom now which dwells in man. For the kingdom of God comes not with observation. The kingdom of God is within you. So he saw that coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride for her husband. This is what you call the, 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 the body of Christ uniting. Because there's a marriage, right? Bride indicates marriage. Christ uniting with his people. Okay? Verse 3, And I heard the great voice out of heaven saying, Behold what? The tabernacle, the temple of God is with men. <laughs> no longer a physical structure. No longer a physical structure, but a oneness relationship where God dwells in man and man dwells in God. Go look at, look for the study what did Jesus go to heaven to prepare for us? I think that's the name of the study. If I remember, I'll put the link at the top. If not, go to the full studies. Look for that study in the full study playlist. What did Jesus go to heaven to prepare? I think that is it. Something along that line. Anyway, so behold, the tabernacle, the temple of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Notice there, it's a relationship. It's the oneness relationship which Jesus prayed for in John chapter 17. This is what has been fulfilled. This is what the new heaven and earth is about. It's a new relationship between God and man. <laughs> God tabernacles with and within his people. Both the resurrected saints from heaven and the living saints on the earth. This is the kingdom of the heavens. This is the new Jerusalem. It came not by observation, but by internal revelation. Now, Isaiah 65, verse 17 to 20, talked about this new heaven and earth. But let me ask a question before we go there. 
since the new heaven and the new earth, since the new Jerusalem, specifically, since the new Jerusalem is an internal kingdom, right? What would happen or what would be the experience or status, let me put it that way, what would be the status of those who are not in that kingdom? <laughs> right? Think about it. If those in the kingdom have the kingdom within, what is the status of those who don't have the kingdom within? They are out of the kingdom, right? Okay, just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. Let's look at Isaiah 65 verse 17 to 20. Because here is Isaiah <clears throat> talking about the new heaven and the new earth. And we'll see what he has to say. Well, what God says through him. It says there, God speaking through Isaiah, he says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. For the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. So again, notice when God creates a new, he expects us to forget the old. Okay, so again, this is coming into the understanding of covenant relationships. So anyway, he says, um, But be ye glad, be you glad, and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem. So notice, wasn't Jerusalem already existing? Yes, yeah, so he says, this is a new Jerusalem he was going to create, right? So, He's speaking of the new Jerusalem. He's speaking of new heaven and new earth, i.e. in new Jerusalem. <laughs> okay? And in that Jerusalem, you will have rejoicing and people, her people a joy. Okay? And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall no be no more be heard where? In her. Remember I was just asking about, well, if those who are in the kingdom have the kingdom within, what would be the status of those out of the kingdom? Because here is here is where people lose it. They are thinking of a global kingdom. But what God is really talking about is not a global kingdom. He's talking about an internal kingdom. <laughs> so therefore, this kingdom is not going to be in every single body, in every single person. Maybe there will come a time where, because the Bible does talk about God's glory filling the earth, okay? So maybe there's going to come a time where, where that will happen, right? But right about this time, when the Bible talks about there will be joy in my people, joy in Jerusalem, he's talking about joy within the kingdom which is within the person. Okay? So you will able to have joy because you have the Spirit of God which brings the fruit of the Spirit, one of which is joy, right? So that joy will be coming from within. But the person right next to you who does not have that kingdom within would not be received, would not be experiencing that joy because why the kingdom is not global the kingdom is internal <laughs> so it would be possible for me to sit here being in the kingdom and the very the person right next to me would not be in the kingdom right you see the difference now if the kingdom was global or earthly then it would have a location. So therefore, anybody in that location would be in the kingdom as it was in Israel and in Jerusalem. Once you entered into Jerusalem, you have entered into the kingdom of God, right? Whether you were whatever, wherever you came from, whether you would be Jew or non-Jew, once you entered through the gates of Jerusalem, you were in the kingdom of God. 
But in the new heaven and earth, right? One person could be the, in, in the kingdom and the person right next to them could be out of the kingdom because the kingdom was within. One person could have the joy of the kingdom and the next person could be weeping, right? And I'm not saying that because you're weeping, you're not in the kingdom, but I'm just, I'm just talking according to what this scripture is saying. The voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, right? <clears throat> There's a specific context to this voice of weeping. This voice of weeping was because God had abandoned. It's in Revelation chapter 18, I think it is, where it talks about Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Why? Because she has fell away from God. She has, she has, she has broken her marriage covenant with God. And that is why she would be weeping because of the destruction and the judgment that came upon her. Right? So this weeping has a specific context based on the desolation and the destruction that came upon the ancient Jerusalem. Okay? That's what it's talking about, the voice of weeping and the voice of crying, okay? But look at verse 20. There shall be no more there an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his years, right? For the child shall die a hundred years. What did you say, Lord? The child shall die a hundred years old. In other words, the people in the new heaven and earth, they will taste death, right? But if you were in the kingdom, you remember it is just you are transitioning from your mortal body to your heavenly body. But look what happens now. But the sinner, so there will be sinners <laughs> in the new heaven and earth. Right? But they will not be in the kingdom. They will be sinners in the new heaven and earth. Not they will be, they are, because we are presently living in that reality now. So I should I should be careful in how I use my tenses. So let me rephrase. In the kingdom, right? They people still taste death. And in the new heavens and earth, they are sinners. Right? And even if they live to a hundred years old, and when they taste that, they are still what? Accursed. Why? Because they have not the kingdom within. They have not been connected to God, their Father. And so, when they taste death, they perish. Good? This is in line with what the Revelation says. <laughs> okay? So, let's jump to the Revelation and see what it says there. Revelation 21, just in case you, you know, skeptical about what I'm saying. Revelation 21, 27. Speaking about the same new heavens and earth. Let's establish this in verse 1. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So we know that's the context, right? Jump down to verse 27. It says, And there shall be in no wise, sorry, and there shall in no wise enter into it. Now, this is the kingdom, the Jerusalem. They shall no wise enter into Jerusalem. Now, new Jerusalem is part of the new heavens and the new earth. The new heavens and the new earth is the new paradigm. It's the new world. It's the new age that we are living in. But in that, in that heavens and earth, in that world, there is now the kingdom. Okay? And the kingdom is God's people. Right? And that kingdom is not a literal. It's not a denomination. It's not a building. It's not anything like that. It is those who are connected to God. End of story. Okay? Those who are born of the Spirit and have been reconnected to the, to their heavenly Father. That's the kingdom. Good? They are sons of God. So now, there shall no wise enter into that kingdom anything that defiles, neither whatever works abomination or makes a lie, 
but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. God, that's not all that it says concerning that now. Verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do His commandments, do God's commandments, and specifically the commandments as pertaining to this new heaven and earth. When Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he was talking about the same kingdom here, right? He said in John chapter 3 verse 3, he says, Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born again, born of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom. <laughs> right? So the kingdom in the new heaven and the new earth, the kingdom is there, but you just can't see it if you're not born of the Spirit. Why can't you see it? Because the kingdom is within. <laughs> right? It's within. That's why he says you, it doesn't come by observation. You can't see it with your literal eye, your natural eye. It's within. It has to do with your covenant relationship with, the, with your heavenly father. 